Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck and I get to travel the back roads of the state of Jefferson, Southern Oregon, Northern California, meet the people and hear their stories. Well, today's no exception. We've got a story for you that is hard to believe. The farmer came. In fact, when I found the farmer, she <laughs> was out there with the cardboard box, I think, pulling weeds. Meet Pat. Pat Dusseldorf. Did I say it right? Van Dusseldorf. Oh, that's I left, fine. <laughs> I left out a whole. It's a long one. And uh, there it is. Wildlife Safari. Mm -hmm. What do you know about that place? Oh, it's a fun place to go to. Where? You can see all the animals in Roseburg, and they, they're in um, cages. Not cages, they're, they're out wandering around, and you drive through them. In a cage? Yeah, they're, okay. they're really neat. Now, this was her work shirt, because I found her out working in the <laughs> garden. One thing we have here at Better Life Television is beautiful flowers, people who care enough come and weed and water and plant. I know Rosie White used to she make the, just do them and somebody had the nerve to come and steal them. I just, it breaks my heart that anyone, well they stole my husband's uh, letterman jacket right out of my car. If anyone finds class of 1950 blue and white Grants Pass T A Letterman sweater, please give us a call at Better Life Television. <laughs> but that's a long way from Pat and what she, uh, what she does here at Better Life Television and next door at the... The Dorcas. Yeah, Dorcas. Community Services. What's community service? It's a place where people can come that are in need of food and clothing, and they can get it for free. They, they, have, they can't just come and get food and clothing and then go sell it someplace else. Well, if they do, that's their problem. <laughs> you know, we don't judge what they do. <laughs> but, uh, but there are a lot of people that we really can help each year, each week. Well, it's been a, a place I drop by and find some things, some props for the set, and, and uh, beautiful people who volunteer. Uh, Bob was one of my, my favorite interviews. Uh, Bob since, uh, he worked there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soriano? Yeah, Soriano. And uh, other guests, I always wanted to get the guy who started, who was working there 10 years ago, yeah. he was crippled. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yeah, Mr. Cook. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Cook. What can you tell me about him? Oh, he was priceless. He had such a smile on his face all the time and people would just flock to him. And he really, he just made the Dorcas because he was so good with the people. If he couldn't find something he, for them that they needed, he would call around at different stores, the different Salvation Armies and whatever, and he was, he was a people person. A Dale Cook. Person. Dale Cook. He was a, a teacher mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Just a, a wonderful friend uh, to young people. And Dale was in charge, even though he, I think it's arthritis, isn't mm -hmm. that? Yeah, it was the, rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. And, and he could still drive, he could still do most anything, mm -hmm. but open and close his hands. Yeah. Well, tell me about Dale. And, well, I don't know too much about him, except that he was my Sabbath teacher at, and, uh, and just such a friendly person and knowledgeable. He used to live in Alaska, and he had some cute stories about that. We, we really loved hearing his stories. And then he moved to Grants Pass when I was just a teenager, <coughs> and he put up with us teenagers. I was so happy. You know, I, <clears throat> teenagers can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Where were you a teenager? I was a teenager in Seattle. Okay, and what brought you all the way down to... I got married. Okay. Yes. I married a forester, and uh, he found the trees were in Oregon when he graduated. Right. And so we came down here. We ended up in Sutherland first, stayed there two years, and then went to um, Medford, 
for about 14 years, and then up to Applegate for about 15 years. Well, it's the Applegate <coughs> connection that I'm so excited about yeah. because you're still involved. Yeah, well, we sold the farm to my son, and we started, oh my goodness, it must be 30 years ago, started some, an acre of asparagus. And it takes about four years to keep it going before you can pick it. And, oh um, my. Yeah. You, so you. we had a, our last son was ready to go to college in about four years, and, and this worked out just perfect. He said, you pick it, and we'll send you to school. Yep. Well, he, he was not there to help pick it. He was oh. in school. <laughs> but, you know, when we first started, we had no idea how to keep it uh, or, you know, how to process, who to sell it to or anything. Well, how do you keep it or process it? Well, we learned that <clears throat> they don't allow it anymore, but we used to set it in tubs of water. Right. In little pound packages and things. And we sold it at the growers market right when it was first started down in um, the town at the fairgrounds. And, uh, oh, don't you love Ed, growers markets, folks? I mean, you meet the most fascinating people at mm -hmm growers market and they're proud of what they've done whether it's honey or whether it's mm -hmm. home and most of it's organic and it's what good for you you know it's just it's not all pesticide-y <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here i wished i could get some of that asparagus well i can manage that Ooh, goody <laughs> but you've done other things before the asparagus you were raising Flowers? Did mm -hmm. I hear? What kind? I started raising miniature roses. A girlfriend of mine said, oh, you can raise these easily. She said, you know, just take a little cutting this way, and we stuck them in little pots. And Well, actually, it was a two-pound can. We had 3,000 cuttings, and we didn't know where to sell them. Okay. And I had these beautiful little roses that were blooming. They were so pretty in little four-inch pots by that time. And I took them to a florist shop, and they said, well, I'll take five or six. And I thought, well, that's fine, you know, <laughs> five or six. And so I ended up, finally went to Grange Co-op. And I was so embarrassed because I didn't know how. He says, where's your invoice? You know, he said, I'll buy some. Do you have an invoice? I didn't know what it was. It, it, you was, didn't have one? You didn't know one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty naive. Well, that's all anyway, right. Anyway, I figured he helped me. And... Uh, how many did he buy? Well, he bought two flats, which was 50 roses. Okay. And after that, he started seven or eight, this was in Medford, seven or eight flats at a time. And I had the, the thing that people don't usually do. If the rose didn't sell and it bloomed out, I would replace it with another one. And that's unheard of in nursery business. So I had a good business. Oh, yes, dependable. <laughs> you, yeah. you were faithful back then? Oh. When, you know? <laughs> And, and Applegate was the right place to grow these things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At first we just started in front of the barn, and then I got a 30 by 90 foot greenhouse, and that was fun. That I was. did a lot of things in there. Well now, doesn't um, Jackson and Perkins do roses right here? In they do now. Mm -hmm. In Southern Oregon, and... Uh, mm -hmm. When they started theirs, you know, they could do more volume than I could, and so, I phased out that and did gladiolus. <laughs> gladiolus, where's the name come from, gladiola? I have no idea, but they are a glad flower. And I <laughs> see it as a gladiator, oh. uh, the, the sword coming across and all that. Mm -hmm. I like them a bunch. What did you do with glads? Well, I bought them, the, the bulbs, I bought them from a man named Paul Brandon, and he's still in this town, he's 92 now, he and his Ooh. wife and they're such dear people. And he had hybridized these glads that he gave me for 50 years. And he had varieties that people had never seen before. And I learned how to plow. <laughs> I had a carpenter friend that taught me how to plow. He's a farmer. And I plowed up two acres in that land of ours in Applegate. And I planted and planted. I had a girlfriend and her two children, which helped me a lot because they could get down in the, you know, because you have to plant them about six inches deep. But that Applegate soil, I had white ones. I don't know what variety they were. They were over six feet tall. I could carry three of them at a time. And I'd fill my van full of these big five-gallon pots of glads, dozens of them, different. 
and I'd go to all the florists. He had a route, 22 different florists, from Eagle Point to Ashland. And oh, it was so beautiful. And it, of course, flowers to a florist is like a candy shop. And they'd say, oh, I just need maybe a dozen. And they'd end up with four or five dozen. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. Well, you bring up a, a subject out of my childhood when the Parkers would oh, have them. You did. Mm -hmm. Melvin mm -hmm. Parker and his dear wife, my goodness, she would even go to Chico to deliver flowers. And on another day, I think she'd go over to Klamath. Mm. Another day, she'd go to the coast. I think that's how it went. Because when I had my car wreck and I was in the hospital in Chico, mm. here she came with gladiolas for oh, me. How precious. Oh, it, what a gift. What a gift. And of course, it's, well, John Bastian and all these big farmers here went from orchards into rowing bulbs. Mm -hmm. uh, Turk, I yeah. think, was another one. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the other names. Well, Mr. Brannon used to have about 25 employees in different fields that he would grow them in. He shipped the bulbs, too. But then the shipping got too expensive, and they had to quit it. I wish I could have seen those gladiola parades. Uh, oh, well, maybe we can show you a little pictures of oh, those. Oh, I would love to My see dad that. was always snapping pictures, and uh, oh. I have a number of his, you know, I didn't even enter them in the county fair, these big pictures of mm -hmm. gladiola parade. Oh. And uh, the beautiful, they would be very um, intricately put together, a little like the Rose Parade, mm. and beautifully done. I remember the KUYN, which was our radio station here, mm -hmm. one and only, <laughs> and they'd have, you know, the, and you could go the night before and help people build these. Then they had gladiola princesses and the queen, oh, it was big, you know, with big the deal. crown. Mm -hmm. And uh, the end of gladiola, parades and I understand it was when they could ship out the glads to to buyers elsewhere mm -hmm. that became lucrative and they didn't yeah. want to cut them off oh in the early days I understand they were grown for the bulb mm -hmm. so cutting the, the flower was no loss mm. you've grown other things what else did you sell at growers market Oh, let me see. I think I pretty much stayed just with the roses and the asparagus. Asparagus. That, yes. Now, is there a <laughs> chance I can get local asparagus mm -hmm. at Growers Market in Grants Pass and where else? Well, I think my son said he was going to have um, Century Markets. And um, I know he sells at Quality Market in Medford. Aha, uh -huh. and so Quality Market <coughs> gets local quality food. Yeah. What about Applegate? Do you live out there now? No, or? I don't. I live in Grants Pass now the last 15 years, and uh -huh. I just moved. Well, what about, what about Applegate? You can tell me stories about people you met out there at the oh, Grange. Oh, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> Were you involved in people. Grange? Yes, and I was involved in, uh, let me see. Mostly the Applegate School. That was fun. I, I drove the school bus for a while and was a teacher aide. And uh, then I became a home health nurse. One of the first ones in 1977, the first class from Rogue Community College. Ah, I, I thought I was just going to go visit elderly. You know, that's what I wanted to do. And I ended up in an anatomy class at Rogue Community College. That's a long <laughs> way. Well, I wanted to do something so that I wouldn't have this empty nest syndrome. See, I was almost 40 then. Okay. And so, <laughs> and so I did that, and it evolved into um, working with the elderly in their homes for the county for the next four years. And it was a lot of fun. Well, now, Pat, the first time I met you, as I recall, <laughs> you were doing that work mm -hmm. for someone our TV audience knows real well. What was that about? I don't know which one you're talking about <laughs> because I, I had a lot of people that I took care of. The Wagners. The Wagners. Oh, that was later, yes. That was just a few years ago. 
okay. was it a couple years ago? She and hurt her hip. She hurt her hip and wasn't healing well. No, didn't. And, and Pat said, I'll take over the chores that you can't do. That well, was we, easy at her home. <laughs> <laughs> we had a wonderful little luncheon <laughs> out there when she was bedridden and, yeah. and uh, you and I shared uh, a lot of fun things. There are opportunities when one person is sick or hurt mm -hmm. that you'll never have the chance when healthy people, the people that have been so incredibly supportive of me, cannot believe they'll say, Grandma had cancer, or I know about lymphoma, or can I this or that, or they'll give me advice. Three of them gave me their, my little, Great nephew calls it hair hats. Oh, that's you know, cute. cute. Um, he was trying to, to figure out about wigs and what they were all about. But it's been a real blessing. So mm -hmm. I have a blonde one and whatever, and the one was going to be red. But like she red. decided she needed to bleach it uh, just for sanitation, sanitary. I took all the red out, so now I have two. <laughs> Friends, we diet. <laughs> friends are incredible when you have tough times. Have you f noticed that? I, I really enjoyed not some of the people I've taken care of. Or I don't know if you remember O.J. Brenner. He oh. was um, an auctioneer down in Medford there on the Four Corners, they call it, by Central Point. Okay. And uh, I don't know. It just seemed like it was a privilege to take care of these people. Who else have you cared for with the... Uh, I did it for seven years on my own, um, or actually about nine years. I took care of my mother and my husband's mother, and then four other people. In and your home? Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah, is... Yeah, we had an adult foster home by then, and, and that I was in 90. I understand that adult foster homes, <coughs> that concept started right here in Rogue River. Did it really? Pass. I mm. met the lady who... Um, I was directed, people will say, you ought to talk to so-and-so, you ought to talk. So I go and knock on a door and say, um, I'm interested in your story. Would you care to share it? Well, some of them, and she was one, said, yes, I'll share my story, but not on TV. <laughs> but I had heard from my doctor that uh, she had the concept of home health care mm -hmm. um, or foster home, and it really is a great blessing. If someone doesn't need to be in a hospital, why mm -hmm. be there? Right. Yeah, that was a good help. With your seniors, what can you? Uh, what did you learn? What What kept their spirits up? What kept their heart alive? The ones that really did the best were the ones that were optimistic and that kept doing things like crossword puzzles if they could, or there was one lady that, I'll never forget her, she came from uh, Laurel Gardens and she had been, well, you know, they sort of overdosed sometimes with the medications. And when she got off of the medications and, and was a little better feeling, she started to crochet and she never thought she could crochet again. Oh. And um, it was Nellie Johnson you probably have heard of them. Um, anyway, she, she had worked at the fair for years and years and, and took first prizes for all of her. But the idea that she could crochet again and knit again, we started her out on the granny squares first, and she did about 300 of them. Ah! <laughs> and she was precious. But um, if you keep your mind active, you know, it, it's a um, Well, and help. there is something, needle and thread, that uh, this crochet hook or or I do have never learned crocheting very well I think in high school I had to do one set of hmm. uh, I, I think you pillowcase edging mm -hmm. but after one of them I found somebody to do the other one because I'd passed the <laughs> class oh <laughs> uh, quilting you know mm -hmm. we've got this gorgeous quilt here and and our, mm. we've done quilting shows because uh, there's so many people in our area who are into quilting. Mm -hmm. They do well too. And now Beautiful. you're talking about 
crocheting. Yeah. And Ruth Gergel is a whiz at, at that. I mm -hmm. mean, she and her blind sister, um, you know, just turned out works of art mm -hmm. with their ability. They were mm -hmm. both, I think, 90s, yeah. uh, very capable. Now, you're not dreading what's ahead, are you? No. You're, you and I are both past 65, I Ooh, guess. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I have a birthday this month. Oh, my. <laughs> Happy birthday already. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> why? Why is there no fear? I just have a peace and a knowledge that the Lord knows best, and he's going to take us through whatever we have to do. I, I just don't worry about it. I, I don't like to read the newspapers, though, I'll tell you. Well, it's, it's, it's you know, awful. the headlines are designed to sell newspapers. Mm -hmm. And the same can be said for the TV. Those headline, you know, hook you in and watch the commercials. That's yeah. what that's all about. Um, Sometimes they're better than the show, though. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess you're right. Oh, what have you got there? Oh, just a little treat for you. Oh, for me, <laughs> thank you. You don't uh, know my favorite food. <laughs> is it really strawberries? I, I've got myself making smoothies now. Do you ever do that? I've been known to, but oh. give me your recipe. Well, I see. I throw in some strawberries. I throw in some yogurt, maybe some tofu. I throw in a little bit of, um, let me see, what is it called? Soy milk. And it is, you know, maybe a banana and some ice cubes. Swish it up. It's good for you. Milkshake. Yeah. Without the ice cream. Right. And, it, and it's very good for you. How did you, uh, I mean, you've made some changes in your diet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and how is your health uh, reflected? Or I, get, I think I saw you at a health <laughs> chip program, mm -hmm. didn't I? Oh, that was wonderful. What took you to chip? My husband. Okay. I knew he needed help. <laughs> coronary, Not me, but he, of course. Coronary you know. heart yes. improvement. Project. Project. Mm -hmm. And what happens? Oh, it has been wonderful. That is the best program. If anybody ever hears about it, jump on it. It's a lifestyle change. And I had, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving, I had all kinds of dinners and I'd allowed myself to eat wrong and sort of forgot. I knew how to eat, but I forgot, <laughs> conveniently, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but my husband had had uh, four bypasses a couple years ago. And I know that they plug up again if you're not eating right. Right. And I was getting worried about him. Because he walks with less ease. Yeah. Yeah, he has diabetes too. So anyway, he lost 20 pounds in the four weeks that we went there. Wow. I lost about 10 or 15, but I've gotten down 22 now. And so it really makes a difference what you eat. And you walk. You exercise, you walk. That's what keeps you going, you know? Your circulation, circulation is, is the thing. And the Roseburg um, Seventh-day Adventist community has just put on their fourth CHIP program. Oh, good. And Grants Pass is planning a second one. And mm -hmm. I know that there are other CHIP programs around. Mm -hmm. I think you can even look on the web and see I imagine you can. where these things are happening. If you're interested in your health, may I suggest it all starts with eating. Yes. It does. Right? You bet. Walk, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. But um, eat good for your food. I can't remember how many million of cells that we have that have to be nourished every day. And the best thing is to start out with a big breakfast and what? then not quite as much for lunch and then like a, what is it you eat as a, King for breakfast, the queen for lunch, and a pauper for supper. And it works. Now, what has happened at your, your dinner, let's say? What mm -hmm. do you serve for dinner? That smoothie? Well, sometimes. Usually I use the fruit in the mornings, and then the vegetables in the afternoon, and then maybe we'll have a super sandwich in the, in the evening, or and, an apple. And can evening. you say this has made a difference in your home? Well, for one thing, I haven't had any heartburn for five years. <laughs> and that was a real plus for me. <laughs> and your husband? He's, he's lost He's weight. more active. He can, 
you know, he's, he's feeling a lot better. Because there was a time when he was so sick, you had to yeah. be there all the time. Yeah, Is that he, right? He had a rough time for a while. He's, you know, he's Dutch and kind of stubborn. <laughs> oh, really? Uh -huh. I thought it was German guys yeah, that were stubborn. Well, he's just, yeah, he's on the edge. <laughs> but, um, but you know, he's it's a believer. scary. Yeah, it's scary to have four bypasses, you know, to want yeah. to cut your sternum in half and all that. Yeah, yeah cuz Doug had a five way and they slit his leg. Yes, they did that and his, too. Mm -hmm. His sternum as you said. He's split the whole way now cuz he had an aneurysm about in 95. And he's a pretty plucky little guy. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much hope out there. But you got to do some of the gotta things. Do. You got to walk the walk. Mhm. Mm you can't just talk the talk either. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> oh. You know, it, it's been a blessing to meet you again, uh, to you. share your story of asparagus and roses and gladiolas. We didn't even get to the children and grandchildren, did we? That's no, do you have, we learned your son has the yeah. asparagus. How many acres? Well, he's got about nine acres of it now. Do you get out there and cut asparagus? Or? If I can, yes. <laughs> if you can. Oh, man, it's a, uh, in fact, asparagus has look kind of like glads, doesn't it? Mm. Looks like it could be. It's really strange when you look out on the field, it doesn't look like anything's there. And you get down there and there's all kinds of things. Uh, sprouting up. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes right. the fern gets up. The fern? Yeah, for the, the fern is, is one that has been let grow too tall, you know, before you cut, cut it. And mm. that's the food for the next year in the plant. Oh, it is. Yeah. So you, leave you the fern. Mm -hmm. I learned more and more. <laughs> I'm so glad that I tuned in to Better Life TV. Aren't you? I'm so glad, Pat, that you've Thank been my you. guest today because you, you not only help next door, you help every place you go with that beautiful smile. And folks, you've got a gift too. You've mm -hmm. got a gift to share. A kind word, a smile, and your own story. Because yeah. your story can win friends. Mm -hmm. Be real. Thank you for tuning to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying bye for now.